Hello, my name is Arvan Amleshi, and today I will be covering the basics of the CSS layout system grid. We frequently use it here in Team 3061 Husky Robotics to style the buttons of our scouting web apps in a very user-friendly manner. We will begin this lesson by introducing what CSS grid really is. Essentially, it is a two-dimensional grid system used for styling. As the name applies, CSS grid relies on creating a container that consists of two dimensions, rows and columns, and placing elements in the container. Creating a grid container is very simple, as all you have to do is give the CSS property of display grid. For example, here we have a div called folder that has two child elements. By giving the div folder the property display grid, the child elements of the div are placed in a grid formation and therefore turn into grid elements. So here we go into the CSS and do this. And here we can see the grid and the grid elements. When creating a grid container, you can also set the properties of the columns and rows when defining it by using the properties grid template columns and grid template rows. For example, I can set the space that each row takes using direct measurements of space, like PX or FR. FR is particularly useful because it divides the grid area in ratios, as briefly shown here. So this is with PX. This is with FR. When evenly spacing grid, the columns or rows of a grid, you can use the instance of repeat to space numerous rows or columns the same way without repetition, as shown here. You can also create space between rows and columns called gutters through CSS. As shown by this code, you can do this by using column gap and row gap properties. So we're using the unit of 2EM for both gaps. We can see the transformation here. Additionally, grids can also be nested within divs. So going back to HTML, we can make a new div. And this time, let's make it a folder. Create another div inside of this, and also give it a class. Let's give this one another class. And let's create three ins three copies of this. So like this. Then give them unique names. Then we can close this div. And then because it's nested, let's also create another div class. And then let's close the original div. Let's see here. There's a new grid. We can unselect this one and just hover over this, and we can see that new div. Then please note that there are many unique ways to create grid containers that will not be talked about during this video. So I recommend going to the Mozilla Developer Network page to learn more about these ways. And here's a quick overview. And there's syntax explanations and also further tutorial reference. 
A grid container is defined by the numbers of lines, of columns, and rows, as shown here. Hence, the elements of a grid, shown here, and hence, the elements of a grid can be placed in accordance with the placement among these lines. You can individually place elements of a div through CSS by defining the start of the column, end of the column, start of the row, and end of the row individually for it. For an example, if a div class folder 3 is created with three individual divs inside of it, we can place each of them individually. So let's create a new div. We can also have it be categorized by class. Let's call it folder 3. And let's create new separate divs like this. And then let's make three copies of this. close this up and let's go to CSS and from here we want to individually place them but before we can individually place the child elements we first have to make the actual container so we're once again using that very helpful instance of repeat and then we want to individually place each element by ID so first we can start with column start let's just set this to one we can copy this and call this end we have that copy we can change this to grid row start and it will not s let's just have it s let's have the row started at three then we want to make three of these and then each of them are individual And the only thing that's changing is the row, because there is one column. And then we have to change this to N. Let's refresh this page to see what changed. Wow. Very nice. Instead of typing all four column and row locations as shown here, you can shorten this to just the property grid area, which is formatted like grid row start slash grid column start slash grid row end slash grid column end as shown here. So let's just change this to just grid area to slash one slash two slash one. And as shown here, it's the same exact thing. Some very important thing to keep in mind is when individually placing grid elements using the grid area, it is crucial to keep track of the order of how they appear. By using the Z index property, we can control this by giving higher Z index signifying a lower, a lower order. So for example, we can add property Z index one and then a Z index two, but there's no order to change here doing this, so we can just note that it does not affect the code here. And it's the same thing for the other. Lastly, there are a ton of more elements to CSS Grid that are crucial to learn about, but for the sake of the most effective learning. I recommend to go to this website, A Complete Guide to Grid, and read about properties for both the parent and children of a grid. In particular, I recommend reading about alignment properties such as just justify items, 
which we can scroll down to. So there's a lot of information. That's just good review and good practice. Uh, justify items right here, align items, and justify content. And also, I recommend to try incorporating them on your own code and just practice working with these. Thank you.